I'm going to talk to you about medieval manuscripts, and in particular the margins of medieval manuscripts. If you look closely at these margins in these manuscripts, you'll probably all see all kinds of really curious drawings and illustrations that don't appear to have anything to do with the text itself. So in this copy of the Smithfield Decretals, which were a collection of papal letters on canon law, we have to wonder if George Lucas visited the British Library when he created the character of Yoda 30 years ago in Star Wars because, anybody see Yoda yet? <laughs> There's Yoda, tucked away in this 14th century manuscript. Right? The marginal art of the Middle Ages had many functions, okay? The art itself, such as Yoda, might show the dangers of acting contrary to God. It might poke fun at or criticize uh, the text itself. It might elucidate what was being said. Some of the images, not the ones I'm going to show you, are actually quite lewd, bordering on pornographic. Uh, but today, uh, today we're not going to look at those. Um, we, might, we might consider some of this art actually very sacrilegious. But what you need to remember is that in the Middle Ages, that line between sacred and profane was a lot more fluid than it certainly is today. In short, the thing to remember about any of these manuscripts is that the margins and the center talked to one another. They had a conversation. So continuing the movie theme, I want to show you some rabbits, OK? Monty Python and the Holy Grail was not the first depiction of killer bunnies, in fact. <laughs> Here we have one. Have another one right here. Bunnies ready to go. I want to spend some time. I want to spend some time on this one, because this is really curious, right? What do bunnies mean? So here's a page from a 14th century breviary, which was a, uh, a prayer book, a missal, basically. Um, we see a rabbit riding on a snail that has a human head, biting a dog that's riding on the shoulders of another rabbit. So what's this doing in a prayer book, right? So our first thought might be that it's a depiction of good against evil, right? Some kind of epic battle going on. But what if it's actually about love? After all, jousts were an important part of, of chivalric culture, that is, two knights fighting for a woman's love. And indeed, the snail often symbolized all-consuming love. But snails had another representation. They often symbolized the cowardly Lombards. Um, here, perhaps, contained in this hybrid creature of the snail with the head of a, with the head of a man. Okay? Or the rabbit on the right, perhaps, is a symbol of fertility, directing, because you know uh, what they say about bunnies, right? So symbols of fertility, directing the action um, against a second rabbit that is being ridden by a dog. So is the dog perhaps a faithful servant? Dogs, we know, that's what they are, right? Or in some medieval ter interpretations, dogs were symbol symbolized confession because dogs were thought to eat their own vomit, OK? So is this, a, is this a depiction of a battle between sex and repentance for our sins? Or is the rabbit really a trickster, like our current day Br'er Rabbit, right? Trying to fool us into thinking way too much about this whole business, right? Okay. So if you can see, there's no simple explanation. The illustration can mean many things. And this actually is the beauty of such manuscripts. The margins were in conversation with the text, and their very ambiguity invited the reader to ponder their meaning. 